no faces, not my face, just the screen and the voice, because I'll be doing some demonstrations in a moment. Um, so, welcome back. Um, I hope you will manage to settle into books now, flying with using the library, getting to grips with it all. Um, what I'm going to do now is um, a sort of session on on how to do literature searching for your uh, literature review, which is expected to be a part of the applied research module, which is big concerning. So, um, so um, yeah, so I've got this room till half half two only, so I'm going to make it quick. You know, usually I like a bit longer, but um, to discuss, but. As I'm motoring along, please uh, interrupt me and so forth. What, what I've given you is, like, you've already had the reference in guide, and you probably keep that by your side for when you're planning to do the first few assignments. You soon to get to grips with it today. It's not, 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 not going to be a problem for you, I'm sure. The only way to learn how to do it is, is, by, uh, is, is by actually doing um, And literature search strategy thing I've given you we'll be looking at this this is how you can kind of make sense of your uh, of your research topic you know to come up with a title a research question and then to think about the keywords and to break it down so you can then you then have a selection of terms that are useful for, for searching the um, library library resources I would use the library resources, I said this in the last session, because Google's great, you know, I mean, it has a lot of stuff out there. So, we're going to be looking at that now. We're going to think. So, so we, what we're doing now is the process of writing literature starts with a literature search. Which is a search that is gathering relevant and authoritative secondary searches, set the sources for you on your topic. You might be tempted to use Google. Use the library resources, that's the stuff that you paid for. Use Google by all, by all means, there's a lot of really good stuff out there, there's a lot of rubbish out there. And I mean, as this guy says, you know, Abraham Lincoln, like President of the United States, he, he, his famous quote is, the problem with quotes found on the internet is that they are often not true. I found that on the internet. <laughs> found that through Google. Now think about that. That's a kind of illusion. You could actually always believe that he said that. But, you know, I, I, of course you, you didn't know he wasn't around at that time. He didn't that he wasn't around. So, um, but there's a lot of other kind of illusions going on on when you search Google. You know, when you go through there, there's lots of there are people that probably had one too many drinks of a night and got really excited so it's really uh, having a bit of a laugh just thinking, well, okay, I'll, I'll put something out there and everyone's going to believe this, you know, so um, there are people out there doing that kind of stuff and organisations doing that so be careful, think about think about um, think about it before you access stuff there within a library the stuff is generally pretty safe, you know, you, you get into really good quality resources. Use, use, um, use a mixture of journal articles and textbooks and reports that we find in the library and you're going to be fine. Be careful using, using uh, Google. So I, I always think of this, I have five honest certain friends, they told me all, all I knew. Their names are what and why and when and where and who. Keep those words, simple words, in mind when you're assessing and when you're critically uh, 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 analysing your, your, uh, your, any results that you get. And that, you'll be safe with that. You'll be safe with those, those in mind. And that will help you with the reviewing, because that's what you're going to have to do when you read the literature review. When you get your article or your book or whatever, think of what, what is being said. Is the website stating information as a fact? If you're using a website, is it for a journal article? You, you, could, you, could, you could argue that you perhaps don't agree with one of, the, one of the authors and maybe the facts are a bit kind of not quite there. If it's factual information, how do you know 
which is correct, that's what you said, you know, just, just really verify. Is the information detailed enough for what you, what you need? What evidence is given back up? To back up what they said, what are the sources can you find to check the information against it? Try to find a different type of source. Does the web page itself uh, give sources of, for, it, for the information? I mean, it's pretty simple stuff. I mean, it's pretty obvious. But when you get carried away with this kind of dissertation work, it's quite a big piece of work, and the adrenaline gets going, and you quite often go really rushing along with a gang of all attitude. Sometimes, sometimes I'm guilty of doing and you, you forget to see things. So, 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 so we've got what, and why, why, what agenda the authors might have, and therefore how that might bias the information. If you have, for example, if you have any information on a particular drug, is is a web pro page produced by the company which makes the drug, in which case it's going to be kind of biased towards it. So, so think about why, when, when does this information that day from? Yeah, I always check to, 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 to uh, see how up to date the information is. Does the web page say when it was last updated? Is a web page or um, is a is a website generally being maintained? And can you check against sources you you know are up to date for comparison? And then we got where if you find the page through a link called web search and you're not sure where it comes from, look for the home page. So have a look to see, 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 see where it was, was produced. Yeah. If you're doing a, a project that UK based and you find something in about Australian uh, building regulations, well, you're not going to use that. You want to use British building regulations and so on. So who is selling it? That's the last one. Can I trust the person or organisation behind this web page? Are they likely to have their facts right? If it's a research paper journal in a, in a, in a peer reviewed journal article, well, you can be rest assured it's pretty, pretty good. Um, so, and, and always think, um, think of the authority, think of the author. Are they a recognised authority on the subject? Do other sources, you know, records and books and journal articles refer to them? You can use, you can see how many times they've been cited, for example. That's when you can look at the sightings or something to see what, um, what is, uh, how well used it is, how, how respected it is. Is there a bibliography of articles, reports, books on the <coughs> publications by the personal organisation or the website? So you can see how many other, other, other publications they've published. So, so that, that's just to bear in mind. So what I move on to next is a um, literature search strategy. Now, what I would do is just write in your kind of, your top, an idea that you have at this point. Just put it in, just put it in there. And then, say for example here, I've got modular constructions. Modular, modular construction benefits and limitations in the UK. So just put it in. Um, and, and then you can come back and, 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 and then um, you can you can then um, amend it later on, you know, put it into more um, grammatically correct if it's if you just but it all back to front, words back to front. It doesn't matter how it is, it gives, gives you a guide. So you, you would, for this piece of work, you want to really be structured, because it's quite a large piece of work and you can lose track. So to make notes, if you don't normally make notes when you write essays, which sometimes I, I, I can do for a short piece of work, I keep all in my head, I've got a very good memory for stuff. But for a larger piece of work, even if you've got a really good memory, just write it down, get the practice of that, and write them down, down, down ideas, ideas for searching, ideas for you type. Because the thing is, you can, in the, you think of a great idea, and then suddenly, next day you think, oh gosh, I've forgotten that. You know, because it, it's it's all the adrenaline stuff going around in your head, and and you you get getting pulled away at times. It's quite a piece, big piece of work. So so kind of rein it in, just keep it in focus and break it down into small tracks. And, 
and you can structure your, your searching. And this is, this, is, this is the secret to it, really, to find the literature you need. Um, so it's the preparation, so you've done preparation. So we've got, we got immediate keywords, we've got modular construction, limitations, and, and UK, and benefits. Those will be, um, or you could have, um, and then we think of identify alternative uh, terminology. So we've got, um, can anyone offer me some alternative terminology? Let's have a quick. Quick look, what was it? What's another? Do you know what modular construction is? Prefabrication. Huh? Prefabrication, yes. Um, limitations. Cons no way for limitations. Constraints. Constraints, yeah. You're getting hang of it. UK. United Kingdom. Excellent, excellent. I put in the. Um, I put in the, uh, uh, the abbreviation there. So, I mean, this is a bit sort of abbreviations, acronyms, and what have you. So think of that, you know, you might want to put it in full. You, you might not get it if it's just an acronym. You know, CIO, big chartered institute of building, that all, that's what it comes up. That's up the head, you know. Um, so we've got um, benefits. I mean, well, perhaps UK. Yeah, let's see UK. Great Britain as well. Great Britain. UK is also and benefits. So, so that's kind of, think of your terminology, think of synonyms. Synonyms is another word for alternative terminology. So think of that. It's almost like when you're doing one of these quick crosswords, but it give you a word, you have to think of another word and you fill it in. That's what the exercise is about. So, um, so think about that. And um, so I, 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 this is what I've done. Someone said prefabrication. I've, I've lifted technology and construction, sustainable technology, perhaps, Buma, United Kingdom, Great Britain, GB, sustain prefab house. You see those with an asterisk at the end. And what's that, what that is doing is cutting off the end of the word. So, um, so sustain, sustain, Sustainable is sustain will be sustained, sustainable, sustaining, I suppose. Prefab will be prefabrication, prefabricated. It will search for housing and so forth. So, so with that, it will work in Google, but that's a kind of, we call it truncation thing, putting aspects there. It will work in, in the library database. It's very useful for it when using library search and, and the library databases. And Labour would look for variants of um, the spelling, the American spelling for Labour, uh, uh, which is L-A-B-O-R, or, or the uh, U-R. So if you're not sure of the, the spelling of the word, but you could put in the letters, the question. So you should pick up, get that. So some tips there. Combining your keywords. So think of how you're going to do it. Here I've got prefab with the asterisk uh, and great Britain and sustainability to, to narrow down your search. So limiting your search because at the beginning I suggest when you write in your, uh, your research question to remember a topic that is neither too broad nor too narrow. If it's too broad you can end up you, you can end up all over the place with the of the tangent. So, so, so focus it. And not too narrow because otherwise you be just really you need a lot of time for the research. You need three years. And that's how long the PhD takes. So park that idea if it's a really wonderful specialised idea, park that for when you come to do your PhD. So and then we've got some ways of limiting your search. So maybe I'm going to make it a bit narrower. I'm going to look at um, Prefabrication in the UK since 2010. Or I might have a, a particular case study. Case study Manchester. Case study North of England, for example. Case study, let's stick to another part of the world, Turkey or whatever. You know, um, so so think, think of how you. And then think of the, the databases you're going to, going to, to use. Academic search complete, every business source complete, 
and on language search, put language search in there as well. Um, construction information service, so and so forth. So, 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 so think, think of. Um, Think, think of what you're going to use. So Google, Google Scholar. Think of, think of them of where you're going to go for this. So right now we've got our working topic. We've got our our our, our dissertation title, our working dissertation title. It doesn't have to be fine at this stage because as you're going along and you're searching through the literature, you might want to change it. You might want to make changes. You might be inspired by a particular paper or a, or a book or or a technical report or something that someone's done or even another um, someone's in, in conversation with your tutor you might think well I think on, on, on that's a really good idea what we've got here I think I might change it what, what, to what we've just been discussing so it, it's a work in progress but make notes so what I would do when I'm 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 um, Go to searches. I put. I just copy and paste that at this stage. I do what is called scoping. I'm looking for just doing a, a wild, wild thing. I'm just going to put the whole thing into my research. Whole, whole entire in there. See, just to see what happens. You know, you might. That's some, some stuff there, um, but a lot of stuff which isn't relevant. So. I mean, you might be lucky, you might find something, you scroll down, and there's a heck of a lot of stuff there, you could, you could filter it as 1088, or we can, we can then just break it down, um, we can look at modular construction, we can do this, and when I put these, Which is that If I put it in the quote marks. Now if you put in the quote marks, that, that kind of makes it as a kind of phrase. Mm -hmm. as in, yeah, as it, it makes it as a kind of phrase. So, and then we can put in um, modular construction. Um, UK. See what that throws up. It's, it's going quite right across a whole range of subjects, but we've got some something there. We've got, got something um, best design module. There might be something in there. We could go and explore that book. Um, but there's a lot of stuff which isn't 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 sort of relevant. Um, oh, we can put we we can put um, we can try. Try other methods as well. We can go back to our constructed search strategy, and we can um, look at uh, think. Let's try prefabrication. Prefabrication. Pref. Uh, oops. Uh, Asterisks. And construction, um, whatever. So I'm just playing around with it. I'm seeing what. Um, what ah, there we are. That that's, that looks pretty good. That's a book there. You can use a book. Books can be very useful. And that looks pretty good actually. I mean, for this particular one. Now, the way way you can use a book is is. Um, if you find something that's really good, right, we can access it, and I uh, hope to show you now. Um, okay, move online.
So if we go at the end of each chapter, there should be um, there should be a, a a list of references. So you can follow up the references. Look at the reference list, and um, if we can pick one up quite easily. It's go down. quickly as what I'd like to like it to do. Um, but at the end of each chapter there, there's a reference list. So have a have a look, follow up those references as well. So we come back to um, like research and there's a whole set of really great stuff there. And I could almost uh, do my dissertation off what we've got um, off that. So there's a journal article as well. Thing. And again, at the end of each one, there'll be a, be a sort of um, reference list. So, scroll down this is not a I've got one in that one so a very good example but usually at the end of a journal article there's a reference list and then you can cut and paste the journal article cut and paste the journal article if you want come back to, to like research and then type it cut and paste it in there and then um, see if we have it. If we haven't got that journal article, then you can order a, a copy through the interlibrary loan service. Any items that we haven't got, that, if you find something that's really useful and we haven't got in the library, you can use the library, interlibrary loan service to order a copy. So, another thing about library search um, is you can save these saving making notes and then go up to the items and then you can select all and then email them to yourself to put your used to email. Try, try and make an use of that as well, that's, that's quite useful. And then it comes up and then it, it, it's in your inbox and it's clickable links then to the, to the, art, to the articles that you've chosen. And that's another way to use library search is to use the advanced search, you can search for just title, and you can search for, for various formats, so you can actually try and narrow down the search straight away. So that's sort of library search, that's kind of various ways. You need to fiddle around with it and, and, and interchange your keywords to, to find, find out what you want. Um, Another, move on now, and, and what I would then do is, is look at some um, specialised databases. So if you go to subject help, clicking on subject help will um, take you through a full list of other, other subject help pages as well. So we, what we've got is we've got one for architecture, you might be interested in doing something on tall buildings. <coughs> business studies, if you want um, business information, uh, and, and health if, you, if you're going to do a um, project on hospitals. But we'll have a look to see what we've got in construction. We've got a list of databases there. We've got academic search complete. We could put in our search terms there, prefab. And... Um, 
construction. So try try that, see what that throws up. And this is kind of although my research it was for this, it's, it doesn't always pick up the article. So it's always it's always good to try this as a belt and break they braces approach and we've got quite a few there that might be of use to us. Um, so any ones that we find useful we can we can then click on those arrows there and it will add it add them to the folder and then we go to the folder and again we can select all and then email them to so. But this is academic search complete just for me to explain is is um, I call it a database but it's really a collection of journal articles of uh, really good quality journal articles. So it's a good quality kind of research. And you can you can narrow it down to peer reviewed which is the top top um, kind of level of, of, of research paper. So this will allow you to do that, to filter it. And you notice there there's an abstract worth reading through. There's also keywords as well. We've had a capability. Um, so forth that you might want to want to look at. We might be inspired to, by looking through these, to, to then go back and change your, your, uh, your, uh, your, um, your, your title. So subject help, instruction, tool text, databases. So you've got Avery, that's pretty much a similar sort of interface as well. You search that in the same way. And that, that's a collection of um, general articles relating to architecture. Business source complete. This might be a useful one as well. Prefab. And construction. A different set of different set of um, results here. That looks pretty good that that and then we go to the folder and then add it to the folder let's see journal article so, so um, should we count construction databases and we um animals are very good one as well and would be pretty good construction information service i think i showed showed you that the last time that's really kind of useful for technical papers and reports um fativa i don't think i showed you this this contains a lot of international news but it also contains construction news um a lot of building uh, some journals as well as newspapers, Financial Times as well. So, let's take, take hang on. If, it, if that happens, it's throwing me out. Just keep. Fever. There we are. So, it's a slightly different, different, uh, different interface here. So slightly different. So we put up prefab, and you've got type and construction. And you can search when you search. This contains a Financial Times as well, but it's pretty, pretty uh, intuitive. You've got these filters down on the left-hand side here, and. 
and subjects, you can see industries, so you can filter it down, and to places, and, and so forth, authors, so it's quite useful. But always the first one is the, the most recently published um, item is listed first. That I do advise you to use this if you get stuck scrambling around for information. This one will throw out quite quite a bit, really good quality. Um, but journalism really is big, big, big your trade uh, and broadsheet papers. So, um, and there's a lot of stuff relating to construction and mobility environment on this uh, database. Um, so. Environment databases and that's Factiva. We've got Emerald as well, which is another important one. I think I just mentioned that. I serve Science Direct is good for kind of um, more science related stuff, and you put in Prefer. So, a lot of kind of more technical stuff in the plans there. So don't forget about that, and that's just a bit useful as well. Um, so, we can move on. We can go into Google. Now we can copy and paste this here into Google. Tell you about Google, about all the nonsense that's there. Is there's a way you can use Google. You've got all, all, stuff, all, all sorts of different types of people writing stuff. But there's this thing up here, there's settings. Settings. Going to advanced search and type .ac.uk. And what that is doing, that's a domain name for university. So what I'm doing is set it up to search for research papers in the university. And that'll be good quality literature. That'll be pretty good. And then you can type PDF in, down it down to PDF, and then we've got the full text set there. So that's kind of useful too, as well you can use. And then you can go back, you can do do something, set it as uh, .gov.uk. And the advantage of doing that is it's looking through the UK and local authorities and things. So if, you, if you're doing it in the United States, so you're looking for the United States um, literature, you can put .h, you add you, for example, that will search all the, all the, all the universities back in, in, in the United States and what the government papers in the United States and so forth. And um, so that's, that's a tool to think about using. Another one is um, obviously Google Scholar. Um, <coughs> so, I'll show you something here. Yeah. You can see those three lines up there. If you didn't already know, we'll click on that and then go into settings and then library links. And then type in, I've already done it here, but type in Oxford Brooks University. Um, then what you end up is, is, that, is this blank, this box coming coming up on the screen. You take that, save that, and then um, you type in the search terms. And what you have is these appearing, and it'll recognise you as a, a book student, and then you can it will search out a repository and bring out everything that we have available to so you can access it directly through the through the so it's kind of useful to know that. Um, I mean Google Scholar is great, I mean if you set it up this way then it's probably through not everything, it's, I think it's about seventy percent. I would always go back and, and search the library anyway, you know, so make sure you've got everything. 
um, and of course you can see this thing cited as I mentioned earlier to see, see how many other people have, have sort of um, used this, this kind of research as well so, so um, and another thing going back to that in settings is the button as well you can, you can um, You can, you can set a button to, to appear, which I've done there. <coughs> Just looking at the time. So, back to the Octobooks library. Um, lots of other information here. Um, referencing the plagiarism, you find that guide. And there's much more about referencing plagiarism on there. We've got um, EndNote, you might want to be, be thinking of using that. And do you know what EndNote is? Right, okay. So, um, well, it is, it's, reference, it's reference, reference management software, and um, it's pretty pretty easy to use. Um, we have training on it. Um, week four, week five, week seven, week eight. Have a go, just set yourself up an account. It's free for you, your guys. It's pretty, um, pretty, pretty, I use it a lot. I mean, it's, it makes referencing quite an easy job and here's a, here's a kind of Fed up with red marks all over your bibliography. You need EndNote. Store all your references in one place, add your own notes, and then generate a beautiful bibliography. It's easy. In a few simple steps, the references that you've stored in EndNote can be inserted directly into your essay and your bibliography will appear at the bottom of your work. Check out the library EndNote web pages for more information. So, so that's there for you. I mean, we, we've got um, we've got the version of the, 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 the full package here, yeah, and that's already been paid for. So, so, so it's free to you. So, I'll have a look at that. I, I, I sort of like using it um, from, from my own work as well. To make, it's very, very quick. It'd take you about an hour, an hour and a half to kind of figure out how to use, but that's, that's time while, while we're spending. It will save you a lot of time, especially for a large piece of work like a, a master's dissertation. Um, there's also, um, if you think of, um, if you're going to library services, think of using other libraries as well. Don't, don't limit yourself to this library. There's a lot of information. You've got the Bodleian Library down, down the road there. You can, it's joint, free, to, free to join. Do you know what the Bodleian Library is? It's Oxford University Library. It's, it's one of several legal deposit libraries in the UK. What, what I mean by legal deposit library is it has a copy of everything that's published. It has to have a copy of everything that's published by law. In, in, you know, it's a copy of every book that's published in the UK, every journal. Huge resource. Nice place to work as well. Really, really, really cool. It's free to you. Free. You get that um, application form to join from the library help so. so when you get settled in, that's something that you might want to consider using. But other libraries as well, the British Library, the Scotland Access Scheme, if you're in another part of the UK, you can use other, make use of other libraries, other university libraries. Um, and so forth, and there's other library catalogues as well. So you find that just by going through through library services, and it's it's listed there. And we've got an A to Z of other library information. If you're looking for information on statistics, you can scroll down, and there we um, we've got a help page on for statistics in general, so everything there. 
Um, yeah, so do, do you have any questions? That's quite, quite a lot we've covered. So um, I think just a matter of getting, getting um, familiar with the library and, and, and finding your way around. So if, there, if you do get stuck at any point and you really are struggling with the information, just uh, you've got my card and contact details. Just email me as a small, you know, I can do a small group or even individually, one to one, if you sit down with you. You should be able to find enough. I mean, but occasionally you might come up, you know, might, might find that, or you chose something where it's a bit, a bit tricky. But um, I'd be, be happy to meet you. So that's kind of, that's kind of um, why I leave off. No, no questions? When you search with the author, I saw you the keywords. Keywords. You search with the author. Why yeah, you can. You can. You can. Uh, you can. Uh, you can do this. You can. If if you're looking for a particular author, I'm going to library search and go to advanced search and set that to author there. Put in put in the author. And then, if you have an author in mind, and then you'll bring up everything you've written by that particular writer. So we can put in uh, my name. I haven't written anything, but just, just an example. And actually, funny enough, that's my name, but I haven't. I can show you, I'm not the author. I'm not the author of this one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> call our discussion on the I haven't quite, uh, I haven't quite got there yet, you know, I'm not the, the same thing gets your tutor here. <laughs> <laughs> the concept of a paradigm is a community of uh, scholars. Yeah. So if you, you know that there's this group of scholars, Chicago and New Delhi, University of Delhi, working on this, yeah? Already know the Ananya Roy. You type in there what have they published most recently. And that's our very early um, scholar here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. So yeah. If you want to check, <laughs> is that what have they been researching? <laughs> <laughs> I only know this stuff, so you can so. take you. So there, there he is, in the man himself. <laughs> Hundred was it hundred or something? Hundred and thirty is up to let's go through as you see there's lots of material now during my day because some people in the library one phone in the library was just that. Now you guys are in trouble. There's just so much material. And the challenge is how do you narrow it down to focus on that which is relevant and review it and come to a position where you can stop collecting information and now begin to do your own things. Yeah? And that's what we'll be doing when we're looking at uh, writing the literature with you. Now that you have the material, you now know where to get it. How do you begin to tell your story? You can't put down all those readings, 1,000 in your essay, which is supposed to be 2,000 words. The reading list itself will be check out all the Length. Yes. yes. So we have narrow down to say how then narrow it down to the key readings which will be uh, relevant and look credible for my essay. Yeah, so if you've you got those questions in mind, what, when, why, and who, you know, those are questions really be asked. And also journal titles, if you don't forget, you can you can just browse through journals, just have a look through. If you've got a particular journal that you like using, just look through the articles. You don't don't search through, just have a look, just browse through 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 any articles. Just, just go to any journals. So. And you, will, you will observe there will be material not on the internet for a variety of reasons. Possibly because 
the region or the institutions that are producing this material do not have such a presence of this or is produced in a language that is not on the internet or not in English. So we are doing, uh, we saw that uh, vernacular architecture. Some of the material that might help you with vernacular architecture might not be in English. If you are, if you are looking at uh, communities in Amazon, communities in Texas. So, when getting material from those zones, which is not going to how do you access that? And those will be specific to research topic, research question, and how you design you know, uh, the research. So all those issues will come up uh, in the next 